Okay, here we are. Let's see if we can get. Um... So for those of you on Dr. Jill's site, uh, we are live and we're merging it into my site on Facebook. Yes, we're live, Tom. I see it. So we'll make sure. And uh, in fact, I'll share and tag you right now. So all your listeners can. Okay. Uh, oh, Marzi can see us. So that means we're on. Now, honey, can you come in here for a moment so I can hand you my phone and you can get me on? I just tagged you and um, I'm going to share with you too. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I can see myself. I love to see myself, you know, on the phone. I know. It's it's nice it's nice to see when it works. Okay, I think we're live, everyone. At last, sorry it took a while. Hello, hello, welcome. It's uh, uh, Tuesday and it's Facebook Live. It's uh, Mary Agnes just texted and said we're on, so it's working. J Dr. Jill, thank you so much for coming up with the idea. Uh, everyone, our guest today, Dr. Jill Carnahan, my good friend. Uh, we're starting a bit late because Facebook has a spinning wheel. <laughs> on our Facebook page. The wheel of death came up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, and our team said, we've never seen that one before. So how did that one happen? But we're here. Hello, hello. It's uh, uh, 426 in on the West Coast, 526 in Colorado, 726 in New York, and 126 a.m. here in Northern Italy. So we're live. And... Uh, uh, Tracy says, hi, I see you guys, and great. So uh, uh, it's great to know we're live and we're here. Took a while, but we're here. So we're here. Uh, we're here. We say better late than never, right, Tom? That's right, that's <laughs> right. And our, our, our goal is to make it like one of those one of those Facebook lives where people go, oh my, oh my goodness, I didn't know that, I didn't know that. So today's topic, and we're just gonna dive right into it. Today's topic is about mold toxic mold exposure and what happens and you know for those of you that are watching this you've got a great opportunity here for the next half hour to 45 minutes because um both of your hosts have suffered from mold infections that hit our brains yes it hit for both of us and uh i'll start if i may Absolutely. And, uh, uh, you know, I've thought there might be a little mold in my place for a while, but can't see it anywhere. Couldn't, you know, uh, but I, I've thought that probably for about a year. And I actually had this conversation, Jill, with our good friend, Mark Hyman, yeah. about two years ago, where he thought he might have a little mold in his place. And he ignored it because it wasn't really noticeable. Yes. And then he realized that uh, it was taking him down. His brain wasn't working very well. And he moved out and completely gutted the inside of his house, had to take down the, uh, the wood floors, had to take up the wood floors, uh, take out drywall and redo it. Uh, so it's happened to him and it's happened to you and it's happened to me. So in my case, I just had to move. I just had to get out of there. And I'm really grateful that I had your lead on this because you and I, you know, you had shared with me what had happened to you. So I knew that my books? Really? My books got to go? Yeah, know. darn it. I know. <laughs> I, really? My books? And see, Because what happens, everyone, mold produces spores. The spores are really tiny little things that you can't see, but they get, they're in the air. And when they're in the air, they settle on your drapes. They settle in your carpet. They settle on top of your books. They settle on your clothes. And uh, it means... Anything that you think you're going to keep, once you recognize you have a mold problem, you have to take a lot of effort to clean that thing up. So let me ask, Dr. Jill, what was your story with this? What happened to you? Yeah, so we had a massive bold of epic proportion, uh, a flood of epic proportions in Boulder in 2013. And I had an office that was uh, uh, right over a crawl space which was over a basement and the basement got flooded. And this was an older building. And I started having shortness of breath, um, exercise intolerance, 
I would come home from work with red eyes that looked like I'd been drinking, which of course I wasn't. <laughs> and we had two flights of stairs from the lobby to my office and I would get short of breath walking a patient up those stairs. Me and too. I was kind of embarrassed. I was like, what is going on? I mean, I was running five and 10 Ks before this. I'm very athletic and in shape. So it was definitely unusual to have the shortness of breath. I would get sick frequently. And I started having rashes, like skin rashes, lesions around my eyes, around my scalp. I developed kind of a psoriasis-like condition on my scalp. I was losing hair. My uh, hairdresser said that all it was thinning up here. I didn't know what was going on with my hair loss. And then started getting many infections and uh, especially fungal infections like skin and hair and nails and uh, gut. And I was wondering what's going on. It seemed like a weakened immune system. Um, and you know, it's funny, I have such compassion for our patients because I was in denial for probably about six months. And I know, right? <laughs> we talked about that because it, we, it, you know that if this is mold, it's a big deal. And I didn't know at that time it was my workplace, but it could have been home or work or car. And it's going to mean a loss of things. And yeah. it don't matter, our health does. So I certainly came to grips to that with that. But in the beginning, our patients, as well as ourselves, it's very common to be like, oh, there can't be an issue. Can it really be that big of a deal? These are questions. I sat yesterday with two, a couple that I'm positive, this lady, dear, beautiful, famous author, and she's having jerking and neurological symptoms. And we did massive amounts of blood work. And it came down to the fact that I am positive there's mold in their house that's causing a neurological syndrome that looks like MS or looks like Lou Gehrig's or looks like something very much more severe. And it's probably curable if they get out of the house or they remediate. But they sat there in disbelief because they had one report that an inspector said there was no mold. And I'll yeah. tell you, you know, the average patient I see, two, three, four reports until they get the truth. So this is not uncommon to have a report that says everything's fine, but you don't feel fine and there's evidence to the contrary. So back to my story, I was in denial for so long and then finally my symptoms got bad enough that I checked and I started with urine mycotoxins, which I'm sure we'll talk about tonight. It was very positive for a super toxic a metabolite called trichosethene. This T2 toxin is now being studied in chemical warfare yeah. Uh, as a as a weapon, so it's yeah. that bad. It can cause severe immune deficiency, neurological abnormalities, cancer, all kinds of nasty things. And this yeah. was in my body, so yeah. that 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 got my attention. And then I started doing the testing, and I found raw uh, bulk samples of Stachybotrys, one of the most nasty black molds in my basement. And I literally, when I found the results of all of this, it was the day after Christmas, 2014. I walked away from everything in my office except my patient records. And I never looked back. I sold everything that was not contaminated. And I gave away, I, I got rid of my books. I just dumped them because like you said, I had 20 years of medical school books and books are precious to me, but my health is more precious and I got rid of it all. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I had a very similar story. I started losing my hair and I've been proud of my hair that, you know, when I get my hair cut, you know, the, the person always says, wow, you've got really nice thick hair. And I've had it for years. And in this last year, it's been getting thinner and I can see like scalp a little bit. And I've never been able to see, uh, what the heck, have I all of a sudden crossed a line somewhere where it's accelerating hair loss? Where's that coming from? And then I've got this, um, this skin rash on my right foot, just on my right foot. And yeah. my right leg, I've noticed for four years, four years, I have no symptoms at all, except my right leg was larger than my left leg. My my right foot, you know, and I, you know, there's some exercise you do where you put your hands on your knees and you kind of press them and roll around, roll the knees around. And uh, but when I put my hands on my top of my knees, my right knee is always larger than my left knee. And I didn't have that for my entire life. And I've been doing the same exercises since I started doing Aikido back in uh, uh, 1974. And I'm, oh, you know, put hands on the knees and roll them around and squat and do. And now I'm conscious. Every time I put my hand on my knees, oh, my right leg is bigger than the other. Now I just accept that's the way it is. No, that's not the way it is. No, it's not my genetics to be that way. There's swelling on the right side of my body. My entire right leg is swollen, and it was the right foot only. You know, I've gotten a lot of foot reflexology massages in my life, and. I've been proud that I've got nice bottoms of my feet, mm -hmm. you know, not all dried and cakey and all of that. It's because I've worked my thyroid for years and yeah. that's contributed to that. Uh, but my right foot, only my right foot was dry and cakey and Marzi's adjusting the screen a little bit. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, go ahead. 
Nope, oh, hold this, okay. But my right foot, and my right foot only, would be dry and cakey, and in between the toes, the skin would be itchy, and sometimes I'd take my shoes off, I was sitting somewhere, just rub my toes along yes. the leg, yes. of, uh, leg of the uh, chair, and you know, get in between the toes and just kind of, yes, you know. And, uh, but that was a sign of mold for me. Tom, you know, I had three plus pitting edema by both legs, not just yeah. one. Yeah. I, for the whole year, 2015, no one really noticed. But when I taught, I never wore dresses yeah. because I had such large ankles because of the swelling. Yeah. And there's this thing called VEGF that goes up and it increases uh, capillary permeability. So what you and I are talking about is this cytokine storm that happens inside our body causes massive, it's like all of a sudden Swiss cheese for vessels and yeah. the fluid leaks out into the tissues. Yeah. And you know, now that we, you and I have experienced this, we have someone comes in with unexplained edema, mold is on the differential diagnosis. Yeah, and absolutely. I'm just finally, for the, I wore Ted hose like socks Every time I flew, flew for the past three years, finally, for the last maybe year, six months, and this is four years after my exposure, can I wear things without swelling? But it took yeah. a long time to heal. Yeah, to rebuild those blood vessels. Yeah, and yeah that Swiss cheese concept is a really good one. You just leak stuff out. Yes. <laughs> so what, what we're trying to tell you is that we are, you know, and being not humble, but in reality, we both are master diagnosticians. Mm -hmm. And our friend Mark Hyman is a master diagnostician. And all three of us yeah. were dumb to this. All yeah. three of us said, well, it's not a big deal. Yeah, Don't worry. Yeah, right. <laughs> and all three of us have suffered substantially. I mean, I had to move. I'm out of California now uh, because I left my place and I just want to be with my wife. Uh, um, uh, but I left everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, I left everything, you know, and the few things I brought, if I wear a sweater, Marzi starts sneezing. Yeah. And so all my clothes have gone through the uh, apple cider vinegar, the, the, there, there's some chemicals you use in the washer to get rid of stuff, uh, to get rid of mold spores. It's the spores, these tiny little spores that mold secretes I guess you could say it's the exhaust of mold, and they're in they're in the air. And if you use an HVAC system, someone commented, uh, HVAC systems just send it through the air, and they just circulate it and circulate it. So uh, there's a whole ramp of things we're going to tell you, and we don't have a lot of time because unfortunately Facebook Live was doing the spin and wheel, and then Dr. Jill came up with a great um, uh, alternative, but it took us about 20 minutes, so we lost <laughs> time here. So let me just give a shout out, if I may. Dr. Saeed is with us from Chicago. Hey, Barada, nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Uh, you, Dr. Saeed, hello. I see so many friends on here. Yes. Julie Matthews, uh, Sue Shipman, Cindy Folly, Lynn Johnson, Mickey Contini, Brian Metcalf, Doris uh, Mendolini. A great welcome to all of you and so many more. I can't yes. name you all. But yes. Thank you for joining us tonight. Agreed, agreed. And Australia and New Zealand and uh, Europe. And so thank you everyone for being here. And we really want to make this worth your while. So um, I've got a few things on my checklist to talk about. So we were going to do case studies, but Jill just talked about hers. I talked about mine enough. That's all you need to know yeah. is that it fools the master diagnosticians. Mm -hmm. It can fool all of us. So the first thing perhaps we can talk about Dr. Jill is how do you identify this thing? Uh, uh, what what screening tests would be the tests of choice that all of our followers and all of our listeners, Nicole from South Africa, hi, uh, that everyone can say, go to your doctor and ask for these tests? Yeah, so this is the key question because the most common question I get is, what's the test for mold? And if it only were that simple, but right. I will say a few key common things. First of all, let's talk really quick symptoms because symptoms alone, this can be a clinical diagnosis that is verified by scientific lab testing. But if you have a lot of these symptoms, I'm going to tell you, you may want to be suspicious and you don't have to have a lab test and you get your home tested. So common symptoms would be brain fog, uh, word finding. Both Tom and I talked about, you know, typing an email or saying words that we weren't even thinking about. It was the wrong word came out. And like, where did that come from? But that's real common, either the word confusion or word finding, like you're trying to say bird and you say cat. Right. That would 
common. And then brain fog for me, when I was in the depth of it, it was trouble with focus and concentration. Like instead of writing a blog in an hour, it might take me two or three hours. It just took a lot more uh, focus and concentration to do the same amount of work. Um, it's common to have electrical static shocks on doors and things. One of the reasons is the antidiuretic hormone, it regulates the salt water balance on our skin and that can be messed up in mold. And so you create a human battery. So I had one patient who broke four computers and three watches in a year and it was mold. So that would be a very unusual but interesting symptom. Um, increased thirst and urination, which is also part of this mechanism, is common. Um, things like skin rashes that we both talked about, especially fungal infections in the gut or on the skin. Um, fungus takes advantage of a weakened immune system and mold is notorious for causing weakened systems. So common respiratory infections, uh, flu, colds, frequent infections. I've had a lot of patients show up with, all of a sudden they break out all over with either genital herpes or cold sores because the virus is reactivated or shingles, real common multiple episodes of shingles where your body can't keep these viruses under check and they pop up. Um, gut is definitely affected. Um, gut increases permeability and what I've seen with mold exposure is some very inflamed and leaky or permeable guts without any uh, typical trigger like the, there's not a lot of dysbiosis or bacterial or fungal overgrowth or parasites but there is a massive inflammatory like there might be elevation in inflammatory markers in the stool or there might be just in, uh, markers like zonulin of increased permeability in the gut and mold itself can trigger massive intestinal permeability just by itself with no abnormal bacteria. So weakened immune system, respiratory symptoms, red itchy eyes, brain dysfunction, um, skin rashes, the digestive symptom, um, strange neurological things like numbness, tingling, weakness, exercise intolerance is incredibly common where you get more short of breath for the same amount of exercise and that's because this whole capillary oxygen delivery system is totally off balance. So you can't deliver oxygen to the tissues. For me, I used to run five miles, no problem. And I would get short of breath after a mile. And I would actually feel numb and tingly in my toes because they weren't getting oxygen. Right. So that's common as well. Tom, can you think of any more symptoms? Well, I'm, I'm with you in every one of those symptoms. Many of them I experienced. Mm -hmm. Now, the one that really catches me and it, it, it caught me when, oh, that's right. I, I need to deal with this thing. And okay. even then, I still wouldn't deal with it. Right? I'll, I'll, I'll be fine. I'll just take something for it was walking up the stairs, walking up a flight of stairs and being winded. You know, when I lived in Chicago, uh, uh, in Evanston for nine years, I was on the fourth floor of a four story building, no elevator. So I do five, six times a day, that's 20, 30 flights a day. And I double stepped them all the time. Yeah. And now walking up one flight of stairs, single step, and I'm breathing hard, my pulse rate's going up. And, and it's just, it doesn't make sense to you. When things don't make sense, Yes. that are happening to you, it often can be a mold. Now we talked about leaky gut. The reason for the effort in breathing is that you got leaky lungs. Yes, right? yes. Because the mold's in your lungs. Yes. So from that perspective, one of the things that's very helpful is one of the tools to use is a nebulizer doing uh, with glutathione. Yeah. And that helps to fight out, flush out mm -hmm. this mold that's lodged in your lungs. It's not just in the gut, it's in yeah. the lungs also. So we have to remember that one. And you know, Tom, I'm again, four years later, I'm almost 99% recovered. My yeah. lungs still test at about 40% of normal function. And I may never fully regain my lung function because of the mold. And what it did in me is it actually created a, a thing that looks like COPD. I've never smoked a cigarette in my life, but I look like I have the lungs of a smoker because of the mold exposure. And what yeah. it does is it, you've talked about the leaky lungs, but for me and for many of the patients, it actually creates this inflammatory kind of interstitial, which means like the little tiny tubules in the lungs get inflamed and irritated yeah. Yeah. and it can cause permanent scarring. Yeah, so yeah. See, COPD. Yeah, uh, so COPD is chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. For any of you that are wondering, it's just, you, your lungs aren't working very good anymore. Yeah. It's like you've been a pack a day smoker for 20 years. And yeah. that's from living in a house with mold. Now it's so common to have this stuff. So we aren't gonna do a whole lot more symptoms, but for the sake of time, yeah. what do you do about this? So yeah. uh, there's just one more thing I wanna say, and that is mold is a very common environmental trigger which remember there are five components to the development of autoimmune diseases. The first one is the genetics for a particular disease like MS, things can look like MS or Lou Gehrig's or rheumatoid. The next one is the environmental exposure, the environmental trigger. In this case, we're talking about mold as the environmental trigger. Then there is your microbiome and how it deals with what's coming in. 
Then there is a leaky gut that develops, a loss of that epithelial barrier. And then there is the immune system that gets activated to protect you. So all five of those are involved in the development of autoimmune diseases. Mm -hmm. And it can be leaky gut or leaky lungs in this case. And mold is a very common environmental trigger that sets you up for many different autoimmune diseases. So if you've got an autoimmune disease, it is now a primary on my checklist for everyone that I talk to with autoimmune diseases, you gotta check them for mold. Yes. Whether they think there's mold or not, you just gotta check. So yes. let's talk about some tests to check. Oh, by the way, folks, for everyone, the mold, the Toxic Mold Summit is going on right now, and there's a replay weekend gonna happen really soon. The link is here that you can see for the Toxic Mold Summit. Dr. Jill's on that, I'm on that, a number of our friends are on that. So there's a whole lot of information, a lot of detail that you'll get about mold. What we want to do here today with you is to give you the holy cow, Batman. Yeah. <laughs> right? So we, we want to startle you so that you'll then take a little time to learn more. And the Toxic Mold Summit is a great place to go because there's a bunch of experts talking about a lot of this stuff there, but we are going to give you some pearls now. So Dr. Jill, let's talk about tests first. Yeah, so testing. So back to my original thing that I got delayed, but that way now you know symptoms, so testing. So if I had to pick one test, um, I always want to test the home and the person. So you cannot get around testing the home unless you're just going to walk out and not know if there's really an issue or not. Um, ERMI is something you can do yourself. And so often I have patients start with that. It's a dust sampling kit. Um, it's not perfect. There's no test environmentally or human that is perfect. So no one test should guide your decision if you suspect mold, even if it's negative. So the ERMI test is a great way to start. I've done hundreds of these and I can now usually get actually off almost better information than the standard air sampling. And some of our most uh, toxic molds like Stachybotrys and Catomium, they're sticky and wet and they stick behind the boards and under the floors and they don't go into the air very easily. So in most of the time, it will not be in air sampling, some of the most toxic molds. So you can have a clean air report and there still be a massive issue. Really Just to be clear on that. Dust sampling, I do find often fine stuff, but historically, Historically, it could be old stuff. So if it's a dirty house that's never been dusted, you might find old issues. But um, both of those things are helpful. For humans, um, I used to not love urinary mycotoxin testing because it was less sensitive. And I'd had patients that were so sick, they were um, constricted, they weren't uh, eliminating toxins, and they would come back negative even though they were so toxic. And the reason was they were so toxic, they weren't excreting any toxins. So right. nothing came out in the urine. So it fooled me for a while, and I thought, this isn't good. Uh, my favorite now, Great Plains, has a mycotox test that uses mass spectroscopy, which is a very highly sensitive technology. Now, the problem there is it might be so sensitive that we're over catching people, but I find it incredibly helpful to find if there's been a mold exposure, either environmental or food. Um, most of the time, it's real and it's environmental. Once in a great while, it could be related to food, and there are ways to, to uh, decrease those variables. But this is a urine test. It's about $300, so not totally unaffordable. And you can check your urine to see if there's mycotoxins present in your body. So that's where I start. There's two free things though. I do these always for every patient I suspect. And that's a cluster symptom analysis, which is just a cluster checklist of symptoms that include all the things I mentioned earlier. And you see how many of those they're positive. If the majority are positive, you go in that direction. The second thing is a visual contrast study. Now I do this in my office, but you can do this online. There's free visual contrast testing online. And I think there's one that's a small a fee at survivingmold.com. So you can do these online. And if your visual contrast is off, the mold affects the retinal acuity. So these are tiny, teeny blood vessels, the smallest in the body, and they're affected just like we talked about our ankles. Both of our ankles were swollen from yes. this vascular, like the permeability, the Swiss cheese of the vessels. Our little tiny retinal vessels are affected. And because of that, all of a sudden we can't detect dark and light lines apart from one another. So you can test this and see if there's a toxic exposure. Now, this was literally used in World War II for the um, armed forces to see if there'd been a toxic exposure. And it works for mold. So it's validated. It's been around a long time. And those are two free things. If you don't have the money to test, you can actually do visual acuity and look through symptoms and see if you fit. Um, so those are ways to check. Now, there's a ton of complex um, tests that are hard to get ordered. I do them in my clinic. But unless you have a physician who understands this, you probably won't get these um, without the doctor's orders. But things like MMP9 and VEGF 
and TGF beta and MSH um, and uh, the genetics. And there's a bunch of things that can indicate if this inflammatory response in the immune system is happening, but those are more complex and they're hard to interpret. So it's probably not something you're gonna wanna do on your own. I think there is a way to test direct to consumer through um, life extension, there's a mold panel. So if you're really, um, if you're really gutsy and want to try and do that yourself and interpret it, you can order these yourself. Um, it's just they're more complex. So those are the basics there. Uh, and then there's so many other things. Again, the questionnaire is really, really key. The symptoms are key. And then I always ask. This is one of the most simple things. Have you gone away on vacation recently? Have you gone on a 10-day trip or a cruise? Or and you felt better? I can't tell you the number of people that I found to have an issue when they went away from their home and they got well. Right, right. And it may be their office. They went away from the <laughs> office and they got well. So it might not be in your home. It could be in your office. Uh, so you know, it's overwhelming, folks, when you're wanting to learn this kind of stuff and try, so, okay, wh where do I go? What do I do? The first place is what with some of these things. Uh, Dr. Jill, your questionnaire that you're talking about, yeah. is that available on your website? Uh, I'm going to share a link. I have a free blog and I have a free mold guide. And if you're okay, I'll just share both of those on the link. Of course. I, uh, I shared the free mold guide link, but I will share that again. And then I will also share my blog, which just has this all written in it. So you can read that and check it oh, out. Oh, that's marvelous. So everyone, you don't have to, if your pen is flying right now, that's good, but slow down, breathe. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's all going to be available for you afterwards. And you always. And I, will, I will also post links to like the uh, visual contrast and some of those things that you can do online as well. Marvelous. That's just marvelous. Thank you so much. So one of the things, uh, uh, when, when we've identified that there is mold there, or when we're convinced, all right, I've got a mold thing, now what, what, what can I expect? What pill do I take? There is no one pill that you right. take to take care of this. It's a complete paradigm shift in how you take care of your body for the next year, two years. Dr. Jill said four years later, her yes. lungs are still, still not working properly. And that my experience, hopefully it's not gonna take that long, but I, if I think about how long my right leg was swollen compared to my left one, that it's been six, seven, maybe eight years since I moved into my place in California that I noticed maybe maybe two or three years after that. So maybe five years I've had this in my body. So it's gonna take a while to get this stuff out, folks. Uh, this requires a paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. so that, for example, the Toxic Mold Summit's really great because yeah. you'll get a, a lot of information that you can listen to again and again and again. And you'll listen to this one again on Dr. Jill's site and on our site. It'll be, and you'll get the handouts that Dr. Jill has put together. And you're going to start doing a deep dive into this for yourself. Because no, there's very few doctors that have a comprehensive overview like Dr. Jill does. And Dr. Hyman does now. Yeah. <laughs> he got sick. It was laid out flat. And you know, he had to leave his house. Just like she did, Dr. Jill, and just like I did. We had to leave our homes. Yeah. So you think you're, you're going to be different? I mean, if some of the top diagnosticians have to leave their house and leave their clothes and leave their books and leave it because yeah. there's too many spores that just accumulate, do you think you're going to be different? Yeah. Excuse me, but this stuff will kill you. Yeah. Tom, you're thank you for saying that. And thank you for being so firm because I sit in front of people all, all the time and I'm almost in tears because I'm like, your health is the most valuable asset you have. When you're 85 years old, your time, your money is not going to matter as much as your health. Right. You cannot. You can have all the money in the world, and if you are in a bed and you can't get out of bed because you're so sick, your health is more important. So That's because right. of that, this has to go to top priority. And you know, I find I'm a very uh, spiritual, intuitive person, and there's often meaning in suffering. And I just have to talk briefly because some yeah. of you out there are in the middle of this, or you are just finding out it might be an issue, and it's overwhelming. It's so scary. And I'll tell you what, every single person probably including myself for sure, probably Tom, it's almost like a PTSD experience. It's yeah. traumatic and that's okay. You will get through it, I promise you. Yeah. You can uh, count on doctors like us to help you and to give you information. Both of us love to put out free information for you guys. So it's out there, we're doing our best to get the word out. Yeah. But the thing about this is, is this is often a wake up call. Uh, for me, it was no different of, you know, what's really important and how do I really take care of myself? And like, again, when you have to decide to get rid of everything, your health is more important and the material things start to become less important. So there is meaning in this and it doesn't feel like it when you're in the midst of it, but I promise you it's a catalyst for change on all levels and it's a really good thing. Absolutely agree. And I don't want to sound airy fairy about this, but when you realize 
you've got a mold infection, there's a reason why you're realizing it and 500,000 people in your city don't realize it yet. There's a reason, there's a bigger picture here. And when you do the deep dive into here and you realize what you've been exposed to and how your brain's been working or your lungs and you start addressing this stuff, you, you come through the other side of it a deeper, more responsive, more vital person. Yes. So if you think that you can live with a little bit of mold, well then you're a better person than Dr. Mark Hyman, Dr. Jill Carnahan and myself because we couldn't. Yeah. We had to move out of our houses, throw away our clothes, yeah. throw away our books because we knew there's no way you can have that stuff around anymore. My wife threw out my nicest leather jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, she she wouldn't do it until I said okay. But every time I, I put it on and she'd sneeze, she just look. I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> okay, it's gone. And it's gone now. It's yeah. gone, and I don't miss it that much anymore. You know, my <laughs> okay. So yeah. we'll we'll just keep moving on. Now, I am sensitive uh, to the time, and Do Dr. Jill has a hard stop. Uh, in the next couple of minutes. And she's been kind enough. It was originally only 30 minutes and she's rearranged a few things, but so we've only got a couple of minutes left. And Joe, what, uh, what are some of the uh, takeaways that you'd like people to have here? Yeah, so um, first of all, it's overwhelming. It feels scary, but you can do stuff and you can do stuff. There are not a lot of trained doctors. That's what Tom was saying and what I'm saying. And this is why this is my mission and passion to teach doctors about mold because we're the, there's more and more functional trained doctors and we're so excited. Tom and I both teach people, but even in this realm of environmental toxicity and mold, it's even smaller. And for people to really understand and comprehend, you're probably not gonna find a doctor in your town. You may but it's gonna be less likely. Um, a couple organizations that are nonprofit that might help you are ICEA, I-C-E-A-I. It's International Society for Environmentally Acquired Illness. This is a nonprofit that was recently developed just to bring out the great science on environmentally acquired mold illness. There will be a conference in May. Um, I'm on the board, but this is all non-paid. This is just because it's good information. So I would recommend you check out their website and stay tuned um, with what's coming up because I think a lot of the great science will start to come from that group. There's a lot of other things out there. There's some Facebook groups. You probably some of you out there are watching from some Facebook groups that I shared to that are mold interest groups. So those are great ways to connect people and get encouragement. We even have a Facebook group in Denver that tells us which coffee shops are moldy and which aren't. So you can get that kind of information from your local groups. And if there's not a group in your town, you might want to start one because nowadays it's grassroots which means you are empowered as the patient. You have yeah. access to more than you've ever had access to. Like the fact that you can get those Sears labs from Life Extension um, without a doctor's order is amazing to me. So you can do a lot of this on your own. Um, you're still gonna maybe need someone to help, but I would start the simplest thing. My mold guide has how to start and it has treatment protocols, the basics. But here it is in a nutshell. You've got to detox. And pills aren't always the answer because if you're so toxic, more pills are gonna to add to that load. I really believe in glutathione for most people. There's a small percentage that do not tolerate this, but glutathione is completely depleted in a mold illness. So you're gonna need more glutathione. If you cannot take glutathione, I prefer liposomal forms or some absorbable forms, or like Tom said, nebulized forms are great. Um, IV forms are great, but there are a small percentage of people that do not tolerate glutathione. You can do precursors, N-acetylcysteine, vitamin C, glycine, selenium. These are all critical precursors. For me, for example, I'm one of those who doesn't tolerate glutathione and I got well perfectly fine with no glutathione. That's rare. Most of you are going to tolerate it. But there are other things like those ones I mentioned that you can take. The other thing is binders because if you have a positive urine mycotoxin test, you have a mold exposure that's in colonized in your body, gut, sinuses, lungs, somewhere in your body. So you have to get this out because if you walk away from that building, you take it with you, you're still going to be sick, right? Because it actually can colonize your body. Now, not everybody's colonized. You can have an exposure and an allergy but you don't get colonized. But what we're talking about is actual enough of an exposure where it gets in your body and yeah. you have to get rid of it. And because mold, it's the nastiest thing in the world because it's nasty toxin and it stops your detox. So it's the perfect storm. So yeah. you, have to, you have to detox. Now, again, because pills aren't always the answer, binders are huge. You have to use, um, you can use over the counter things, clay, charcoal, chlorella, 
uh, citrus pectin, uh, glycomannans, uh, zeolite. These are all options that are available. You can combine them. You can also do prescription binders like cholestyramine or Wellcall. And people can get well without prescription binders. So you can use a variety. I like to use multiple because they're kind of like different affinities for different toxins. So if you combine them, you have a lot of different affinity for different toxins, including endotoxins, which are just from the gut bacteria. So you can get right. all kinds of toxins that are bound out by these uh, binders. Binders don't have a lot of side effects unless you have constipation. So the main thing when using binders is make sure your bowels are regular. Do whatever it takes, extra magnesium, extra vitamin C to keep the bowels going. And you then know, the one, one point on that and then continue. And that is when you're detoxing, you have to drink enough water. Yes. It's half ounce per pound body weight. That's a minimum so that you can flush this stuff out. And on the binders, the one we like is GI Detox. We'll link here for that. That's a great one. And these things don't get absorbed into the bloodstream. They stay in the gut. So those kinds of binders will help in the gut. Uh, Dr. Joe, please continue. But water is so important. Yes, yeah, so this is so key. And thanks for mentioning that, Tom, because it is. And I won't even go further because when you have a mold exposure, often your antidiuretic hormone isn't working, which just means you drink water, you pee it out. You drink water, you pee it out. And no matter how much pure water you drink, you can't keep it in your body. Right. So it's actually even more important to add electrolytes if you're having trouble with frequent urination. You can get any sort of over-the-counter electrolytes. Um, I like um, Thorn Catalyte or um, Elite Sport. Um, or Quintin Hypertonic. There's a bunch of great ones out there. But you need to have these. If you're peeing frequently and drinking a lot and you're thirsty all the time, more water won't really help you. You have to have water with electrolytes because you have to keep that in your the volume in your uh, vascular system. So that's huge. And Tom's right. You still have to drink a lot. Um, but I wanted to mention besides pills, some of the other things that are not pills are actually the most powerful. Infrared sauna. It is absolutely one of the most powerful ways of all toxins of all sorts to get out of your body. If you're super sick, you may go in for five minutes at 100 degrees and feel miserable. That means you're so toxic that as the toxins come out of your body, you're getting sick. You have to go very slow if that's you. You can work up. Ideally, you do 30 to 45 minutes at 130 to 150 degrees three to five times a week. But right. the person starting out is not going to start there. So right. go slowly. And same with the binders. Think about this. If you have metal filings on your uh, countertop and you have a metal magnet and you're pulling those filings across the countertop, that's how it is when you have a binder that you're binding toxins out of your body. And you think you get some filings that kind of lag behind and just stay there as you pull the majority of them out. You're going to get re-exposure as you use binders and as you use glutathione. So when you first start, my example was for two months, I went heavy and hard on the binders. I was like, I'm going to get well. And I right. got hot from head to toe for two months because I was going too quickly. And I was just pushing through. But that's really common to have side effects. And the key is, if you're having side effects, it's you're overloading your body's ability to eliminate the toxins properly. So you have to slow down. Don't push it like that. You, you have to slow down <laughs> to what your body can do. Uh, and, and the infrared sauna is the most comprehensive way of detoxing that I know. Right. So uh, in your bloodstream, you do things like the glutathione, the N-acetylcysteine that Dr. Jill's talking about. But on the outside, the infrared sauna, you sweat. The infrared, infrared rays go deeper. The heat goes deeper in your system, opening the blood vessels, which just flushes this stuff out. So there's mercury that comes out in the sweat. There's mold that comes out in your sweat. There, there's a lot of toxins that will come out, but you can only do it at the level that your body can handle. Oh, I could take this. No, yeah. you can't. No, you can't. Right? Yeah. Stay, stay with the level that you can still function in life, but yeah. then stay with it. As Dr. Jill said, she had hives to head to toe for two months. Yeah. But, yeah. but she yeah. knew what she was doing and she stayed with it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, don't give up. This was, I, and again, I can tolerate a lot because I've been through cancer and Crohn's and a lot of things. So I push harder than I would ever let any of my patients push, which is kind of funny. But um, I would always slow them down. But I was like, no, I'm going to do this and I'm fine. Part of the thing that I'm talking about, and I'm going to open a whole nother can of worm, worms, which we'll have to come back for another FaceTime, Dr. Yeah. Tom. But um, mast cell activation, a whole nother topic, super common with mold. The mold is one of the most common triggers, according to one of the experts, Dr. Theoretes, to mast cell activation. Mast cell activation is when the mast cells in your body get really irritated. It's like they're getting poked, and they start to throw out things like prostaglandins and histamine. So for me, they were irritated, and they threw out histamine, which caused the hive-like reactions. It can also cause diarrhea, brain fog, a lot of the symptoms. So the MCAS is a whole nother set of issues, but it's 
it's often triggered by mold. Right, right. Really good point. All right, I'm sensitive to the time. I know that you've got to go. Uh, so yeah. we, we, we <laughs> will do another one. We, uh, I promise everyone will do another one. So the takeaways for today are three that I can think of. One, watch this again. That's the first thing. Yeah. Uh, do it slowly and just watch a little bit of it. Two, register for the Toxic Mold Summit yes. so that you can listen to more of these experts and at a little slower pace. And three, do a deep dive into this. Learn yeah. more. This is enough now to get you interested. Oh, and one more. Share this with everyone. Please send the link for this to share this Facebook Live to all of your friends. If you take five minutes here and two minutes, if you take two minutes and just go to your address book of your friends and click send, 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 and say this, and even write, this is really great Facebook Live with two of the people that I follow. You might wanna listen to this and copy that, paste it, send it to one friend, paste it, send it to another friend, paste it, send it to another friend. Please give us two minutes to carry this message out to more people. Anyone that you know that is not well or you think would benefit from hearing this, please share this with them. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Tom. It is always such a pleasure. We could talk for hours. I, I love doing it. We'll do it again, I promise. And then uh, everybody else, thank you for listening. And uh, I would just say Echo Tom, the Mold Summit is amazing. You'll hear both of us talk more. Um, and then download my free mold guide. I did that specifically for you because I can't talk to everyone and it's hard to get into the office. So I want to make that available. The basics of everything we talked about is written out in a complete guide. Um, and I do have a ton of free content on the website as well. It's just my name, jillcarnhan.com. Perfect, so, perfect. Uh, everyone, so, that, toxic mold guide, that toxic mold guide is great. I, I highly <laughs> recommend it. So go to Dr. Joe's site. As soon as you share with a number of people here, then go to Dr. Joe's site, download that information from there and get started on learning more about this. And I will see you next week, everyone. Thank you so much. And Dr. Jill, thank you so much for taking the time and for staying late. Thank you so oh, you're much. You're welcome. You guys uh, have a great evening. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.